Hey guys, welcome once again. So this is a uh, part two of uh, the linear equations that we have been doing. And uh, if you if you haven't watched my um, first part, please uh, check on the previous videos. You will see it. Um, it's called the solving or linear equations. Right. So let's get started with this one. Today what we'll be doing is looking at the general definition or general formula of a linear equation and or linear function. And uh, secondly, we'll be looking at examples of how to graph them. Right, so please, if you haven't subscribed, do so, and uh, I'm the one and only one, Gabriel Chimuimana. Um, so let's get started. Uh, if you look at the general equation of a linear function, is y equals mx plus c. However, sometimes it could, you might see uh, ax plus b equals c or equals zero. It depends on how they write it. It doesn't really matter. It's just alphabet, and you can design anything. You can define anything with your alphabet. Uh, however, these are just common uh, mathematicians agreed on. And yeah, so really it's up to you how you want to define them. Now, if you look at this, you may wonder what is y, what is m, x, c, blah, blah, blah. Then there's nothing much to them. However, they are, have so much important. It's so important to understand the difference between them. Uh, they've got y dependent. Y is a dependent variable. Why? Because Y is dependent variable because it depends on X, right? If we don't know X, we cannot know Y. If we don't have X, we can't find Y, right? See how that's how they are linked. So that's why we call it dependent variable because it depends on X. However, X is independent variable, why? Right? Because X does not depend on Y. It's just how it is. For instance, a simple example will be time and anything else that increases over time. Right? Time does not change. You can't control time, right? However, time is most of the experiment that you do. Time will be independent because it does not depend on the y, right? So, for instance, look at temperature and time. Right? Temperature and time. Temperature will depend on time. However, time does not depend on temperature. So that's a simple example of how you could think of this knowing which one is dependent and which one is independent. And it's also important to know that independent variables usually goes on the x-axis, right? x-axis. And dependent variable will be on the y-axis, right? So I hope that makes sense. And uh, we've got our slope or gradient. Slope, gradient, and sometimes it's a rate, right? It's a rate. Uh, so keep that in mind, slope, gradient, or rate, all those things are the same. It just depends on the concept that you are using in physics. You might hear rate rather than a slope or gradient. So it's really depend on the terminology that they are using. However, hope that makes sense. And if you have any question, leave your comments. I will answer them. Um, the next part we have is a C. C is a constant, right? It's always a number. Sometimes it could, the number could be zero or nothing, right? So it's always a number. And so if you move on and looking at the example and how to graph them. The first one you have go y equals x plus one. Y equals x plus one, right? You might wonder how do I sketch this? No, there's nothing much to this. What you need to identify, you need to identify what is your uh, y intercept and x intercept. Y intercept and x intercept. Those stuff are very important because if you know when your graph if if you have two points you can make any line, right? So you only need you need you really need those two. So it's easy for you to know where your graph is passing, is going through a particular point on the x-axis and a particular point on the y-axis and maybe it does only cross at one of them and if you cross one of them we'll call constant we'll see a few examples soon now so yeah it's important to find identify what is your y-intercept in this example y-intercept is one because x is zero if you substitute it's half y-intercept is one x equals zero so if you substitute in zero for x then you have y equals one and therefore your y-intercept is one and um, the other one that you get is um, your x-intercept is when y equals zero so y x-intercept is negative one because your y is zero and your x will be negative one and uh, this is how the graph will look like looking at this graph so I apologize for the screenshot it's not really clear however I hope it makes sense so the important part is to know where the graph cross or intercept the y-axis and X axis so intercept that X axis are one and Y intercept X at X are one and the Y axis are one so 
this is how the graph will look like and uh, let's move on with the second example the second example is pretty much similar however in this situation we have go our gradient is negative or the slope is negative if the slope is negative this is another type of function that sometimes you will hear the terminology saying decreasing function a decreasing function is basically saying the gradient is negative or the slope is negative uh, and physics could be something like deceleration uh, rather than acceleration it will be deceleration and so yeah keep that in mind um with this what does that mean it's basically the same idea find the y accept y intercept and x intercept so we're gonna find them x y intercept will be one because when x is zero you get y equals one and um x intercept is when y equals zero so x intercept is one in this case huh? and uh, what you get for the graph is this you get something like this one huh? so intercept at x one one and yeah this is our graph is the decreasing function as you can see the graph is the opposite uh, to the other one that we saw um so keep that in mind it's really important to identify to know your slope and a slope remember is just a rate between uh, rise and run so, and if we move on this is i started talking about constant function and this is a constant function why it is a constant function it's because we don't have any x or maybe you could say the x is the power of zero and any number to the power of zero is one so because x is the power of zero it's called one we don't have to write x to the power of zero we just write one and that's why we have y equals one and another way of reading this is saying for every value of x your y value will not change it will always be one it doesn't matter what x it is your value of y will not change it will always be one right and uh, as you can see the graph it's straightforward really there's nothing much to it and um if we go to the next one we have go d d is x equals one right x equals one and as you can see same thing however here it's basically saying for every value of um for every value of y for every value of y your x will not change you or your x value will always be one uh, so this is another way of reading the graph um hope that makes sense and notice that this line this time is um, parallel to the y axis however when y when y is a constant function or when y is a number then your graph will pretty much be parallel to the x axis as we saw in the previous example um so really guys i hope this makes sense and if you have any question or comment leave them and i'll try to once to get back to you guys as soon as i can and again if you haven't subscribed do so so that you don't miss the next video thank you